You know I do children's birthday parties too, right? Gentlemen, it's cold as hell and I think it's about time we talked about oil, so let's get to it. <laughs> if it'll go into gear. Come on you beast, there we go. Woo! Good morning, Jeep to Minutes Green Dot 319. How are we all doing? Now, today we're going to look at something I've tried to avoid talking about, okay? And it's oils, because the problem with oils is, like opinions about oils, everyone has one, okay? And not everyone wants to see it or <laughs> hear it. But I've been looking into it and I've been carrying out an experiment with this Jeep to try something that I don't think too many people have tried before, because in this Jeep we've got a brand new engine set up. I mean, original brand new engine, but set up just like they did at the factory. So my thinking was, Let's try something that people say you can't do with these old engines. Let's put in a modern, fully synthetic, top grade, this is Mobile One, top grade oil with multi-weight and see how it behaves in this engine. This engine, in my opinion, should have no reason it can't use this fully synthetic oil. And that's what we're going to try. So before we talk about putting in multi-weight synthetic oil in this uh, thing, let's first talk about what they did in World War II, because surely that's what we should just do, isn't it? We should just put the old oil that they used to use in World War II in this thing and be have done with it. Now, there's absolutely no problem with doing that, of course, but just like most things, technology has moved on and we can make the most of that. This vehicle isn't like it was in World War II. We don't have the parts supply that we used to have. We can't just go to the quartermaster and get new parts. We have to look after what we have especially NOS and old parts, okay, original parts, because some of the modern reproduction parts just aren't up to snuff. So if you spend a lot of money building an engine, you want to look after it for a long time and you want to make sure you get the most out of it. And old oils just can't do that. There's no two ways about it. An old mineral oil without additives is not the best thing to use in this engine. And at the start of the war, what they used was a 30 weight when it was warm and a 10 weight when it was cold. And uh, to start off with, they didn't have any additives in there, any anti-wear additives. As the war progressed, they then went to an anti-wear additive oil, which is what they used. So the weight of the oil is the viscosity of it, okay? So if we have a 30 weight oil, that is more viscous than a 10 weight oil. So all that means is that the 10 weight is less thick, it flows easier than the 30 weight. So instead of talking about this viscosity, all I'm gonna use now is the word thickness because it's easiest for understand. So the 10 weight, less thick, 30 weight, more thick. When it's warm and oil flows easier, it becomes less thick. So when it's at a warm ambient temperature, you know, out on a warm day, the oil will flow easily when the engine hasn't been started and heated up. But if we go to a cold day to like today, or as they did in World War II, much colder, you know, minus 20 sort of degrees Celsius, a 30 weight oil will turn practically into sludge. To start off with, you won't even be able to turn the engine over, it'll be so thick. But um, what you were supposed to do then is when it became that sort of temperature, below a certain threshold of temperature, you were supposed to swap to a 10 weight oil to use in winter. That was less thick and that allowed you to use the vehicle and make the most of it in cold temperatures. Modern technology now means that we can use a multi-weight oil. And what it is, is something like this, which is 0W40. The zero means winter and the 40 is its hot temperature. So this oil, when it's cold, behaves like a zero weight oil, okay, in winter, let's say, but let's just say cold. And when it's warm, it behaves like a 40 weight oil. So what does this mean for us then? Well, the great thing about it is that using the multi-weight means we get the best of both worlds. We don't need to change our oil over when it gets cold. We can use it in summer and we can use it in winter with no fear that if for some reason it suddenly got warm, if we had the 10 weight in the engine, that we could damage it. If we took it out on a warm day and used it for an extended period of time, that 10 weight would be too thin. When it got hot, it would be too thin for the engine to use properly and we could damage it. This oil here changes. It changes from being a thin oil and it thickens up as it gets warmer so that it behaves like this, in this case, a 40 weight oil. So we don't have to worry about damaging our engine if the temperature changes, okay? And we don't need to worry about changing our oil either. There's another great thing about using a multi-weight oil that we can make use of with this engine. And that's when the engine is cold at a normal temperature. Let's say it's not minus 20, where that zero winter weight would be useful for this engine. Let's say it's 15 degrees or something like that. Now, normally if we had the 30 weight, the 30 weight, a straight 30 weight, would be thicker than that zero weight when it's cold, okay? Now, what damages a engine? Well, what damages it 
the most is startup when it's cold okay and why does it damage it because that oil is thick it can't flow the way it's supposed to what we see on the oil pressure gauge is when we start it it goes to maximum doesn't it or maximum before the uh, relief valve lets the oil out that's because it's really difficult to push the oil pump is trying to push it but it's so thick that it's very difficult to get through those tight clearances in the bearings and throughout the engine so it's resisting flow when oil resists flow, it can't flow how it's supposed to. It can't get around those bearings. It can't get up to that cam the way it's supposed to. And you get metal to metal contact and your engine starts to wear. So let's think then, if we have a multi-weight which behaves like a zero weight when it's cold, it's already thinner than that 30 weight would be even when the engine's cold. So what that means is then we've got a head start on heating the engine up. That oil is able to flow better straight away. It's able to get through those bearings and provide that protection straight away. Now, some of you might be saying, well, that zero is going to be far too thin to use at startup, okay, when the uh, clearances are a bit higher and things like that. Don't worry about it. The zero weight is 5.6 times thicker than the 40 um, oil would be when it's hot, okay? So when the zero is cold, it's 5.6 times thicker than in the 40 when it's hot, okay? And the engine's designed to use a 30. I'm using a 40, but it's designed to use a 30. So you have nothing to worry about about being the engine oil being too cold. And we can see that on the oil pressure gauge, mine goes up to 60 to 50 PSI when you start. That pressure gauge shows how thin or thick the oil is. And so if it's going all the way up there, we know that it's thick enough to protect the engine there. It's not too thin, so don't worry about it. So that's just a great feature of using the multi-weight oil there. Cool, right gents, I think we're getting through this okay. So hopefully you're following me here about multi-weight. You can see really there's no argument against using a multi-weight. It just makes sense. The, um, you know, it's cold flowing, temp it's um, cold flowing characteristics and it's warm flowing characteristics are just fantastic. And they're much better than using a straight weight. So really, I mean, if you disagree with my oil opinions, I think you can't argue about uh, multi-weight oils. They are good, you can use them. You don't need to worry about using a low weight oil like a zero in an engine like this, it's fine. It, it doesn't cause a problem. That's what I've been using and I haven't found that to be an issue with it. So the next thing to move on then is synthetic oils, okay? And synthetic oils and using them in this because the conventional wisdom is you can't do it. There's, uh, you know, they're not built for it. The tolerances are different. It won't work, okay? And I've been using one and we've done the 500 mile oil change on this. So let's have a look at what we found in that 500 mile oil change then and let's see if this oil worked or not. Well, I think you'll agree that 500 mile oil change is pretty incredible. I've never seen anything like it there. There wasn't even a single fleck or shimmer of uh, metal in that oil. It was completely clean. What's happened apparently is that the engine hasn't worn at all, okay? We can see there's nothing in there whatsoever. Obviously the oil's a detergent. It's picked up a lot of the soot and crud which would form sludge and it holds it in suspension in the oil. So it's quite black, but there is no metal shimmer, no metal particles, nothing in there whatsoever, which is really impressive. So the oil's doing what it says on the tin it's keeping your engine like new but is that such a good thing for this old engine now this is the thing that I've had to have a look at and this is the thing that I've um, formed an opinion about now I'm gonna let you form your own opinion about it I'm not gonna tell you what to think oil opinions like I said everyone's got them they're all different it's about finding what works best for you. And I found that that fully synthetic modern oil, this one here, is perhaps a little bit too good for this old engine, okay? Now, some of you will be going, well, of course it is, Matt. You know, we all told you this, um, but it's not entirely how you might think. That oil is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's protecting the engine. It's protecting those tappets. This engine has flat tappets in it. You guys know about flat, flat tappets. You know about ZDDP, the zinc. You know that you need that to protect those tappets. Those tappets are extremely high wear, high shear. The forces are massive on them. And normal oil without the ZDDP or other additives 
just means that those uh, tappets get wiped out and the cam gets damaged and your engine doesn't run as well anymore, okay? So you do need that. This modern oil, they have different things other than ZDDP. You don't always need really high levels of ZDDP anymore. It has changed. There's uh, molybdenum and boron and things like that, and they protect it. There are, there are different uh, chemicals that protect the engine. So just having a high ZDDP contact um, content isn't always the best for high wear. There is a blog online called the 540 Rat Blog. If you have a look on there, the guy has done loads of testing on loads of different oils, and he's found the ones with exceptional uh, wear properties and things like that. You can pick an oil from there. Coming back to this oil then, it's not causing any wear in the engine is not the best thing for this engine, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why that is, okay? This oil works perfectly in the bearings, absolutely fantastic, no wear in there. For the camshaft, for the ZDDP, for wear on that, absolutely perfect, nothing to worry about there. We can see there's no metal in that um, oil at all. Now, the other place where we need oil is up on the, uh, the rings, on the pistons, okay? The way these old engines are designed is not the same way that modern engines are designed. You use different style piston rings in modern engines. They're at low tension, they're very thin, they're not these thick old piston rings like we use um, in this engine. And those rings are suited and matched to the, piston, uh, the cylinder at production. You know, those rings don't need to wear in. The engine is already broken in effectively at the factory. And if you put in a oil which causes no wear, well, or very, very little wear from there. It keeps the engine in an as new condition. You don't need to worry about oil getting past the rings. You don't need to worry about wear in the engine as much as you would with this. The problem with this is that we use an older style piston ring and older style tolerances in the cylinders. And these piston rings do need to be seated. They need their final finishing inside the engine the break-in period. Now break-in for this engine does not mean that they were breaking in the bearings or the camshaft or anything like that. Those bearings, you've sorted that all out when you set it up. Those clearances are set. They should stay the same. You're not breaking that in or wearing those in or anything like that. The only uh, bearing in this engine which does actually fit itself or wear it is the front camshaft bearing, but the rest of them, they are fixed. You don't want them to wear at all, but you do want some wear in those uh, piston rings. So if this oil isn't allowing those piston rings to contact that um, cylinder wall properly, you also get a thing called ring float as well, where the film strength and the protective qualities of the oil are so high, those piston rings just ride along the top of that oil inside the cylinders, and then you get increased oil consumption. So what have I found using this synthetic oil then? That is what have I found. It's what someone else told me I might find as well with it. If you use this synthetic oil, it does appear to use more oil. Now, it could just be because it's a break-in period. You know, they do use oil during break-in period. Different oils and different setups have different amounts of usage but for me it was just a little bit too much um, uh, I didn't notice any oil on the spark plugs or anything like that um, nothing out the tailpipe or anything so it's it doesn't seem to be causing any problems but it ca is consuming oil when the oil's so expensive and the protection is so high I just don't think we need it with this uh, engine you know lots of you will have said this um, already and be nodding in agreement but I just don't think we need it with this engine so what I'm doing is I'm changing to I'm not going down too far going to a semi-synthetic. So this is the Mobile Super 2000 semi-synthetic. When you're looking at oil, what I seem to have found is that uh, anything which is API SL or in the uh, EU, ACEA A3 or B3 seems to work really well uh, with these engines. So we're gonna swap down to the semi-synthetic then multi-grade and we're gonna use that in this engine. And I think that's gonna work out really nicely. So far, I've had it in for a couple of miles. It seems to be working really nicely as well. We'll keep an eye on that um, oil consumption. Unfortunately, because we stopped using the fully synthetic, we'll never know now whether the uh, oil consumption would drop off or not because we're swapping to something else. I don't wanna keep it in there and carry on uh, the test, you know. If it's using some oil, might as well just swap over and stop that just to avoid any problems. I don't think we'll get any problems in the cylinders. The oil, um, in, with old oil, if you've got a lot of blow by, you get a lot of oil up uh, around the rings, crusting them up and sort of locking them in, things like that. So you could get problems. But that modern synthetic oil is just so clean, um, but it doesn't really do that as much. You don't get those deposits and it's got the detergent action in it as well, sweeping all that uh, crud out of there. So you just don't get that. So I don't think the rings getting stuck or coking or anything like that would be a problem with it. It's just something I want to move away from. So we're going to swap over to that then.
You know I do children's birthday parties too, right? Joking aside, I tell you what, you learn a little bit about driving one of these without a windscreen when it's really cold like this. I drove 10 miles in this at zero degrees centigrade um, and you really notice uh, the wind at you. Getting on your face is the, is the major problem. You can keep really warm on your core. This stuff is fantastic, but your face is really difficult to um, protect and that sort of face mask. I mean, yeah, you're going to scare little kids and get reported to the police, but I mean, it might, it might help a bit. I wouldn't advise driving around with that on your face especially if you've got a rifle on the uh, on the jeep um the other thing though is sleeves are the worst thing this is where the wind gets up here and there's not much you can do about it i've got the 1944 um uh, jumper on here and it's it's good it gives you a tight cuff there but if you're not wearing that if you're just wearing a shirt that wind gets right up your sleeves when you're driving and it really gets inside you so no matter how warm your core is it's up the sleeves and your hands as well on this thin steering wheel just wearing leather zero degrees you know with that wind chill you you get like a bloody claw grip on here gripping onto it and you start to get pains down your tendons here and things like that so you really notice it so yeah wool and world war ii gear is um, impressive stuff but it's got its limitations but gentlemen that is it for today i hope you enjoyed the uh, talk about oil then you know something to learn it's quite interesting synthetic is great it does work you can use it but it just seems to consume a little bit more as i said i'm not sure whether it's just normal for the braking period you know there's no information to go on with that um, but uh, i'd like to move away from it and uh, use less oil because it's very expensive but that's it join me next time everybody like and subscribe if you haven't liked and subscribe and i'll see you in the future